Okay, we're recording. Good morning, everyone. I'm Suzanne Taylor King here today on behalf of our wonderful CEO at Living Healthy List, Denise Seagal. And I'm going to be your moderator today for Meaningful Conversations. And I'm really excited for this conversation today. We're going to talk in this open, casual environment with our coaches today, Lissa, Luann, and Aura. Um, did I pronounce that correct? Yes. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. I always like to make sure I pronounce it correctly. So welcome. Thanks for joining us here. Um, just a little bit of about our flow today. We're going to be on for about 60 minutes. And we're going to talk today about self and purpose. And I really love this topic because when we talk about ourself and our purpose, we really need to feel connected to that purpose and it helps on your wellness journey, your mindset journey, your fitness journey, healthy eating journey, everything we talk about at Living Healthy List, having a sense of self and awareness of self and purpose for your goals really helps you get there so much quicker. So let me introduce our panelists today. We have Lissa Figgins, an amazing life coach, and I'm going to give you each a minute to introduce yourself in a second. We have Luann, who is a passion test facilitator and coach. Welcome, welcome. And Aura Martinez, another coach with Living Healthy List. And I don't know her that well, so this is going to be really fun to interact with you today. So I'm going to let each of our coaches uh, give a one-minute intro, who you are, what you do, and who you serve, and why being part of Living Healthy List is part of your purpose. Uh, or I'm going to let you go first. Yes, hi. So I'm a self-discovery and empowerment coach helping women gain total clarity of their purpose so that they can wake up to daily fulfillment and certainty. Mm. And to me, just the energy of the people that are a part of the living healthy list, I knew that it aligns with my energy and with everything that I do and the people that I serve. Well, wonderful. I'm excited for today's conversation. And Lissa, tell us a bit about you. Hey, everyone. I'm Lissa Figgins, and I am a Goal Achieve Success Coach. And I help After 40 women, particularly, to stop doing to exhaustion and start being with expectation. Because let's be honest, when we get to this stage in life, we've been doing for a really long time. And it's just almost like you get to that point of, enough, right? There has to be a better way. And so we really look at how can you live life uh, by design and on purpose. So this whole topic of purpose is perfect and right where I'm up my alley, because I believe once you're aligned with that, everything else gets easier. And I love living healthy list because I love collaboration. I love coming together with other, you know, other women uh, who are serving others and, and really looking at our lives and ourselves as whole beings. And there are so many different aspects that we need to make sure we're addressing to really truly live a life that's, um, that's growing and flourishing and healthy and happy like we talk about here. So just love being amongst other women who are passionate about serving others and then connecting with women who want to make those things priorities in their lives. Beautiful. Well, welcome today to today's discussion. And Luann, tell us a bit about you today. Hi, everyone. Luann Beekler. Yes, I am certified facilitator of the passion test. I like to remind people it's not a test. It's a <laughs> process of identifying what you're passionate about and setting a course to living that in your life. It is about bringing the authentic self to the table and being just that. When you get connected with who you are authentically and passionately, then everything seems to come easier. Mm -hmm. So I'm all in line with these ladies, which is why I'm a part of Living Healthy List. My purpose is to help people live in joy, get out of the rat race, out of the chaos, and live in joy. And not only do I serve individuals, but I serve business owners as well. With my process, it speaks to creating the core values in a company and then using those to create culture, which is the foundation of any company, and aligning your team with you and their values um, 
which we use the same tools of the passion test to create. And we ultimately end up with an inspired strategic plan to guide them on their path, keep them from uh, chasing after shiny objects and stay Mm -hmm. in line with what they really want to create in their life. Well, I love that. And I, what I love so much about this opportunity that we've been given here, I know all of you, some of you better than others. And I just heard something in Luann's description of herself that made me say, hmm, she could be a great partner with some of the dental teams that I work with or some of the doctor's offices that I work with. So amazing. Like this is what's so amazing about collaboration and connection. So I just thought I'd throw that in. So in, in keeping with our theme this year, new year, new choices, and our topic for the month of February is resilient self and that definition of self and your personal values and how it aligns with your purpose. So today we're going to talk about and have open discussion with our experts about how you define that resilient part of yourself and how your values go along with that. What's the role of your personal values in with that resilient self? And how important is it for you to know your own set of values? I know for me personally, as an entrepreneur for over 30 years, that if I ever had to face a decision that was against my morals and values in order to make money or to turn a profit, that felt icky to me, not something I was willing to do, but I didn't have a definition for that when I was in my 20s. It was only through work and thoughts and awareness of my personal values. So Let's start off with what roles that self-definition of who you are as a person plays into that resilient part of yourself. So I'll open up the floor to our panelists, Wan, Lisa, and Aura, and take it away. What do you think about this? Well, I'll jump right in. Because uh, of two, the two words that you said that speak directly to the work of the passion test, right? So I said in companies, we use the passion test to create their core values, to uncover them, to find them. And so the words come out kind of synonymous. You know, mm-hmm. it's more comfortable for business owners to use the word core values than our passions. But for me, People are inspired by people who are passionate about what they do. And so we should talk about them about passions rather than just core values. And if you look at it historically, uh, core values often were defined by one word. Mm. But what does that mean? How do you apply that one word, that concept of integrity or professionalism into your work? So in the passion test, we create short phrases that define it in action-based, how we take action in honoring those values in our particular organization or life, um, as it were. And so having your personal passions and values uh, be a consciously aware of them, it also gives us a decision-making tool because this, we say the key to living a passionate life is whenever you're faced with a choice, a decision, or an opportunity consistently choose in favor of your passions so it helps keep you in alignment with those values at all times and another one of our quotes is when you're in alignment with your passions the ups and downs of life fail to throw you off track that is resilience right they're gonna happen those ups and downs are gonna happen so even though i encourage people to follow their passion it does not mean you are living in bliss it means that you are confident in who you are and who god designed you to be and just do that and honor that and things are easier which creates the resilience no matter what's going on around you Mm. i love that one I love that. I I love the fact that you brought into account the ups and downs of life are still going to happen. It's how we 
bless you, Nikki. Um, it's how we adjust to that and how quickly we can bounce back from those failures or lessons or hardships. Um, I love that, Luann. Anyone else have anything to add to that? I love that you said that because the picture it's in my mind when I think of resiliency is I mm -hmm. think of a spring coil, you know? And so like, yes. it, it has that shape, right? That goes up mm -hmm. like this and it's created in such a way that it can, it can take the pressure, right? But still hold its shape. And so Luann, I love the fact that you talked about when life happens, because let's be honest, life is going to happen. And so I think that resiliency is really about, am I responding or am I reacting? Right. And, and that's yeah. where the purpose comes in of like, if I know who I am, if I know what my core values are, my purpose, however we want to say that, then when life happens, I'm not just thrown, you know, tossed back and fit back and forth by the waves or blown by every wind or you knocked off my feet when every, everything comes along because I have that solidness inside of me. It allows me to respond and to choose you know, is this something I'm going to respond to? Is, is it not? And even on those times when it just, you know, knocks you off your feet and you didn't see it coming or it was so strong that you couldn't, I think that knowing who you are and where you're going is going to get you back up on your feet and get you moving in that right direction a whole lot faster, right? When we, when we get knocked down. So love that. Great. Yeah. Great in, dad. Yeah. How about you, Aura? Yes. I, I love what Luann and um, Lisa shared i would like to add two things one it's so important that we know how we define ourselves mm -hmm. because how we define ourselves will also dictate whether we're going to go for our passions or not what do i mean with that if you define yourself as something other than the truth what is the truth you are strength you are more than capable you are more than enough you are enough what happens is if you believe the opposite of that are you going to go for your passions? No. Are you going to be able to stay in your purpose? No. And so I believe that part of you being resilient is holding on to the truth, the truth of who you are, the truth of the circumstance, the truth of life. What do I mean with that? The truth is you are much more stronger than you can possibly think. The truth is that you are much more bigger than your circumstances. But see, we sometimes find ourselves in our life where we think that the circumstance is bigger because it looks bigger at the moment. And when that's what we choose to believe, because we do choose at all times, that can throw us off from really being able to bounce back the way we're designed and capable of bouncing back. Of course, there are some layers that need to be peeled because when we notice that we're not living authentically, there is some kind of layer that we're living from. But the truth is you are stronger, you're more capable, you're more than enough, you are lovable. And so it's when we hold on to the truth that we're able to be so resilient. I mean, there's so much to it, but that's one of them that I wanted to add. I, I love that remembering the truth of who you are and who you were created to be is so much bigger than, you know, a crappy email or a negative <laughs> review or, you know, maybe a financial setback or an argument with someone. It's so much more your identity. So how do we I would love to know um, three different coaches, three amazing insights. You, you've collectively worked with thousands of clients. I would love to know um, what you see is the biggest obstacle to overcome in order to be that resilient, bounce back better, vibrant person who can handle all these things what what do you see with most people is the is the hang up what i see is that we are letting the outside control the inside mm -hmm. right i mean like let's be honest right now every yeah. single person who's on this call has been through a this this thing of covid for the past two two years right and yet people are on the other end of it looking so different because of what we've allowed that to do. So we, either, we here's, here's what happens. So we, our results are, are, are like, a, it's like a cycle. So you have a thought, right? Which leads to feelings, which leads to us taking actions, which lead to our results. 
Mm-hmm. So the person who allows the outside circumstances, people, you know, happenings to control them, that circumstance is what is creating the thoughts that then lead to those things, which are going to lead to usually to results that aren't in alignment, right, with what you want and who you are. But that woman who is able to say, I'm going to initiate the process from who I am and what I know my core values are and my purpose is, you know, we then start the process with those thoughts, which are going to lead to the feelings and the actions and the results, right, that we do want. So I think that's is that we give over control to yeah. the outside world of, of what, of what, uh, what we're going to make of it. Love it. Anyone else have anything to add to what Lissa said? I think that was really well said, and um, it's about conscious awareness as well, because when you can get to the point that you know that you're letting the outside um, guide you versus your internal guidance, then you can make better choices, and, and people are lost in a fog in a lot of cases, and so overwhelmed by that outside impact that they, they can't see clearly. So in the article I wrote for this month, it was about resilience in the sense of resilience. So oh. that you need to take a breath and sit back and look at the situation and reframe it and then take the action you're going to take. Again, you're going to feel the impact. You're going to feel the feelings. And we use a tool called Nature's Guidance System where we encourage you to actually feel the feelings, frustration, Mm -hmm. anger, fear, whatever it is. You know, I just told a client yesterday, I'm like, if you need to go take a shower and have a good cry, go do it. Right. And then you release all that energy (laughs) around that negativity. And then you can sit silence and reframe what's going on and look at what is the positive in this? What am I trying to learn from this? What am I meant to learn from this? We talked about it on the wonder series last week in, um, be in a space of wonder Mm. and awe rather than in fear of what's going to happen. Wow. Yeah. Curiosity and awareness, man. Yeah. This is really interesting. What is this doing for us? I I think all of my years of transformational um, learning and coaching and so forth saved me in the pandemic, right? I would have historically been curled up in a ball in a panic about what was happening. But instead, I was able to sit back in silence and look at what was going on around me and find good things that were coming and acknowledge that I am completely unable to change this. I have no control over it. So it's all in how I choose to respond to it, as Lisa said, right? And I chose to sit back and look for the good as simple as my neighbors gathering on their sidewalk with their kids or in their front yard and seeing families together that I've never seen before the pandemic, right? They're all hidden away in their houses. So it was like so amazing to find those things. And it's a constant. It's not, you're never going to eliminate those negative thoughts hitting you. It's about how quickly can you reframe them to maintain your resilience. And the more practice, the better you get at it. Yes, that's that's what my article was about, uh, is that real-time resilience. Uh, so your goal, you know, through all of this work is to have that turnaround time between the negative thought and a reaction or a response to be quicker. You know, what used to take, three months of negative thinking and analyzing and rehashing um, now takes three minutes to turn around. And that's where resilience can be cultivated. So I love that, Luann. And remembering, um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the gifts. Um, A lot of times we, as coaches, we talk about finding the gifts in those negative situations, but I want to just say that sometimes those gifts are not apparent for years, (laughs) right? So how, right? (laughs) Yes. Um, So how would you recommend our listeners stay open to the fact that whatever 
you know, negative thing is happening, whatever emotion situation, it could be an emotion, a situation or a circumstance that's happening. We might not see the gift right now, but if what would be your number one tip for staying open to receiving the gifts about that negative situation? I would dare to say to remind yourself that everything is working for you, not against you. Mm. And I, I find that when it is difficult or challenging for us to even accept that, it's going to be very important that we go within and understand. And of course, it takes practice, right? If you've never looked within to really figure yourself out, it takes time, but really figure out where is it coming from? That it is hard for you to believe that everything is working for you and 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 not against you. There are mm. times that the reason why it's so hard for us to live in our truth is because we have blind spots. That could be a belief, a story, a conditioning, cultural, societal conditioning, you name it. But remembering that everything is for you, not against you. And allowing yourself also to feel whatever it is that you feel because of what happened, right? I think many times as human beings, we make ourselves wrong because we want to be all positive for what we're experiencing. No, what you're experiencing is to men it's meant to be experienced, but also understand why mm. you're experiencing that that way. Because there's nothing to you. Yeah, great tip. I love that you said that because I think it's asking the right questions and, and getting curious and just asking questions. And I, I know for me, if I write that question, like you just said, Aura, like what, what, is, what is it, why is this happening for me, right? That's already going to change you looking at the positive. If you ask the question, why is this happening to me? You're looking at the negative, mm -hmm. right? So asking that question, and then I would highly encourage, like literally grab out a pen and, and start writing, like ans write out your answers to that question because Sometimes if we're just sitting and trying to process that, at least for me, I, you know, oftentimes am only come to get to a certain point or depth in, in answering those questions. But if I am writing it out, it's like, it just flows and I can start mm -hmm. seeing different connections and possibilities. And, and then you've got something to go back to. And I think that's one thing you asked, you know, what if, what if we don't see it for years? If you have that written journal, maybe you don't have an answer that day, right? But you're, 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 you're just getting curious about what, why could it be? guess what? You can go back to that journal entry a week, a, you know, a month, a year, whatever later. And, and it will give you that, that backwards glance at, wow. Okay. Now I have a little more clarity on, on that, or I see what I was seeing then, but now this is what I see. And so it gives you something to really compare your perspective to. I love that. I, I, I really love the idea that we can, we can write it out and sometimes the things that will come out, what is that called? Uh, the, the three pages or brain dump or whatever you just write until you have three pages worth of stuff. And by doing that, sometimes it's like talking to an old friend, you know, that paper, a friend that you can be so blatantly honest about your negative emotions because there's, there's no judgment on the paper. That's one of the things I love about yeah. it. I love the practical tips, right? Because yes, it, a lot of this is about faith and having faith that all things are happening for the good of you, right? Mm -hmm. And the, when you pra teach practical skills like journaling and writing it down, helps people to make it more concrete. Mm -hmm. You start to look at those pages um, and you'll see consistencies happening through it. My friend and mentor, Deborah Poneman, um, teaches sitting for guidance. Mm -hmm. And uh, Napoleon Hill did this, I think it was. And just asking a question and then writing. Mm -hmm. So literally ask the question, ask to be open. I'm open to understand why this is happening for me. I love that little twist mm -hmm. instead of to me, for me. And then just let the pen write and trust that that ha have faith, trust that it's gonna be good for you and something good is gonna come out of it, right? And the more that you do that, the more that you see the truth in that, as Aura said, right? You can see the truth in that and then you become more confident in the tools.
So literally in our nature's guidance system, that's one of the steps is ask to be open. Mm -hmm. Then feel the feelings, go into the sensation. Where is it happening in my body? What does it mean to me? Write it down and then communicate it clearly to someone else. Maybe you're challenged with someone else. Tell them how that made you feel, not what they did, how you felt in that situation, right? And whether you were in that situation together or adversarially, whatever it is, um, communicating it releases it. And if you can't communicate to them personally, then you go back to the paper and you write down, Mm -hmm. right? And that releases that negativity from your energy and pulls you back in. And so literally asking questions out loud too is very helpful, right? Mm -hmm. And you might think that's silly, but it really drives it home that it's not just in my mind, you know, just like the gratitude journals, right? Write down what you're grateful for um, and make it concrete and on paper instead of just what you think about in your mind it makes it. Well, you I mean, own yeah, it that's, the, that's that self coaching model, mm-hmm. right? So to be able to coach yourself, um, if you don't have access to a coach to, you know, work through these things, being able to ask yourself those powerful questions. Um, I would actually like to ask a question based on that. Um, so if we're coaching ourselves, we're asking these powerful questions, we're feeling our emotions. I remember hearing a long time ago that emotions can only be actually felt for about 90 seconds. And anything longer than that is you repeating it in your head. And it's that repeating or rumination of a negative thought, belief, or situation that actually causes the same chemical reaction in your body as the original stressful event, but you're creating it on repeat yourself. So I would love some tips for our listeners about what you would recommend to not repeat, repeat, repeat that reaction in your brain and your body. I love that question because I had two things in my mind before you even started talking. And now you've just hit on both of them. The first one is that, right, we're reading each other's minds. Yeah. Our emotions are just signs. You know, it's like when you're driving down the road and you see the sign for the next exit, it's that sign is not positive or negative. It's just telling you this exit is here or Ooh, this, great. this restaurant is here or this gas station is here. Right. And so oftentimes I think we see these emotions as negative things. And really it's just a sign uh, that we are, we are experiencing something. And so I love what you said about that 90 seconds, because it should just be a, Oh, now let me raise my awareness about this. Like Luann was talking about, and let me start now doing what Aura said and asking good questions about why am I feeling this way? Right. The other thing I want to pull in here to the conversation too, and you just hit on this as well. When you were asking that question is we talked about not giving control away to the outside world, Right. But I think one thing, especially as women that we struggle with is self-sabotage, right? Where we are the ones who are getting in our own way, where we are the ones who are undoing, right? Yeah. Progress that we've made or, and we are the ones that allow those tapes, like you said, to keep going on. And so I think the first step is acknowledging that it's there, right? Acknowledge that thought, acknowledge that feeling. Don't pretend and hope it goes away or, you know, shame yourself for thinking that it's bad, like acknowledge it. I would say second, then like put it in its place. So what if I give into this? Like, what if this is, I I let this, you know, uh, direct what what I'm going to do from here, what will the outcome be? And like play that out in your head or in a journal and then do the same thing from the opposite side. Like, what if I, what if I just go past this, right? Mm. What will the outcome be on that side and which outcome would I prefer? It's usually the second one, right? Uh, And then, right, Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one, you know, do something, to move yourself out of, woe is me, I'm sitting here with this feeling. So that way you don't keep, yeah, keep hanging on to it for a long time. I I also would like to add, I love everything that Lisa said. I also would like to add that your emotions are also guidance. So they're guiding you as to what to have more of in your life and what to have less of in your life. Mm. What do I mean with that? 
if something causes so much sadness for me, that's an indicator, oh, I need to be doing less of that because it just doesn't feel, of course, um, sadness, there could be so many reasons for why we're sad, but here we're talking about things that we do, right? Whatever they, they cause us to feel. It's so important that you also look at it as guidance. What should you be doing more of? What should you be doing less of? When it comes to switching how it is that you want things to feel in your body, it's so important for us to remember that we always have a choice. So what do you want to experience instead? So one example um, that comes up is, say, for example, someone that would love to be a public speaker. I'm using this because public speaking seems to be one of those things that people are terrified of. <laughs> if you can remember that the fear that you're feeling because you really want to do public speaking is also excitement. You get to choose what that emotion is going to be, right? I'm excited. I'm actually excited. That's actually one of the ways that I was able to get more excited about public speaking, by the way. But anyways, <laughs> it, it was turning those nerves Nerves. And so it's yeah. excitement rather than fear. You're, you're guiding yourself how to be. Like we could guide ourselves as to how to be just by us making the choice. Hmm. And, and I love that and that you brought up self-coaching, right? But we're all here and we're all coaches because that's not easy to do. No. It's, and, it's not hard. It's not easy for a coach with, with all this experience for us to do it for ourselves. It's much easier to help someone else do right. the things that we're talking about. Right. So I think everybody needs a coach from time to time in their life. I have a coach and I, I have a team of people that are a part of that as well that I've gotten to know. And I, it's another support system, yes. right? Uh, being with all these women, getting the same coaching from the same person. So um, I'm going to encourage our audience that if they are struggling to do it by themselves, it's okay. It's okay. I've been doing this work for 12 years, right? I am where I am today because of 12 years of investing in personal development for myself, learning from other people, having my own coach, all of those things. And it's a great place to be. <laughs> yeah. I love where I am today. So yeah, we're never done growing, right? Lynn? When, I mean, even right. after 12 years, I'm with you. I will never not have a coach because it, it helps us to see the blind spots or like you talked about that yes. we can't see, right? It helps us to push past something that we typically would come up against and we would just stop and we would let it stop us. And I always like to talk about the fact there are really only two ways to change your pattern of thinking. The first is an emotional impact. So you have a sudden loss, you have a sudden diagnosis, you have a sudden crisis, right? 9-11, uh, something that just like literally shakes you. But let's be honest, those things are related to hardships, pain, and lack of control, because usually we are not controlling them, right? Mm. But, it, but it does, it, it shakes you into thinking differently. And so I'm not waiting around for emotional impacts to happen in my life. I'm not saying they're never gonna happen, like we said earlier, but I'm not waiting for that to be what helps me to shape my thinking. The other way to do it is just what you said, Luann, it's coaching and mentoring, right? Where you have someone else that's, that's helping you with that belief and that knowledge and helping you to create those new thoughts and the new habits and the new patterns so that you can, you know, you're thinking in a different way. And yeah. that's I much more pleasant <laughs> yeah. than, uh, than something you know, out of control. If I can please add, um, piggybacking on what Luann said, you know, for those that may feel like, oh, I don't know if I should invest in myself in a coach. When you invest in you, you're loving you. <laughs> you investing in a coach is a form of you loving you. Mm -hmm. I love that you use the word invest, right? Because we spend money on a lot of things. When we spend money, it's out the window, right? Dinner out, some, you know, great jacket that hangs in my closet, whatever. Right. And yeah, I enjoy it, but it's, it's just yeah. spending versus what you just said, Oro is investing, right? Investing always has a return. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Yes. And it could be as simple as being a member of living healthy list and reading the blogs, 
Mm -hmm. uh, being a part of the coaching club or having one session with one of the amazing coaches that we have here on Living Healthy List. Maybe it's just coming to these conversations that we're having and investing the time. It doesn't have to always be a financial investment. It could be downloading a free book and embracing that book and reading it and talking about it with someone who's at the same, you know, point in their journey as you. And I would also like to add before we open up the floor to our listeners and our participants here is that helping someone else is the greatest gift. If you're on this journey of your own personal development and growth, turning over your shoulder and reaching your hand out to help someone else who's even just five minutes behind you on the journey or five minutes ahead of you and allowing them to help you is the single greatest thing you can do for your personal resilience, emotional mastery, um, positive life fulfillment, you name it, teaching what you learn. So if you read a great book on personal development or um, emotions, and you share it with someone else, share what you've learned. That's why we're all here today. <laughs> That's Do why that we're all here. Yeah. I also um, wanted to remind them of free coaching Friday that we've now implemented. Yeah, so you're right. It doesn't have to be a financial investment. Mm -hmm. uh, join us on free coaching Fridays. What are they again, ladies? The first and third Friday. Is that right? Yes, first and, first third, and Friday. third Friday at 12 noon central time um, yes. and, and come and have a conversation with us and and we're here to help and that's what we want to do and we want to serve others and yes I love that point that I might be only two steps ahead of the person I'm coaching or teaching and we're yes. in this together so we often say in our passion test family that we are the teachers living the teachings and you teach yeah. what you want to learn so you that's why we're out there teaching it so um we're in it with you yes for sure and i would um i want to add in that uh friday february 18th our our coach for free coaching friday is diane mcclay with the choice and courage company she's an incredible coach that helps people make empowered choices through courageous curiosity. And I've personally nice. worked with Diane. She's amazing at really getting to the root of what you're saying and what you mean in, in such a unique way. So I'm excited for that conversation. All right, let's open the floor. Um, there's a reaction button down the bottom where you can raise your hand if you have a question for one of our coaches or anyone joining us would like to comment or ask a question. Let's keep this conversation flowing. Lori, are you clapping or raising your hand? I'm raising my hand. First of all, kudos. I mean, I've enjoyed very much listening to you all and the amazing wealth of information you've provided. But I have a question on that kind of goes back to the self-definition and the values and all that stuff that I didn't hear you speak about, which, um, I mean, there's so much information you offered. Um, and it's about how being self-defined and how knowing your core values can help you set boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, because people have such a hard time um, setting boundaries for themselves. And so I was just wondering if you guys could speak a little bit to how knowing your values and knowing yourself and what you want and what you need, um, how boundaries become something not to keep people out, but to keep you in alignment with who you are and becoming. So let me, uh, answer, let me answer that, Lori, with an example. Is that all right? So one of my passions is having fun with everything I do. It's pretty clear boundary, actually. If I'm engaged in an activity, at an event, whatever, and I'm not having fun, then I immediately go, why am I here? Mm. Or remove myself from the situation, or I'm not going back to that group or that space or that situation, right? 
Now I can make other choices to turn it into fun, right? And help the other people have fun as well. But it's a very clear and that's just by defining my passions that I can see very clearly automatically in any situation that if this ain't fun, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I love that. love that. I love that because when, when you, when you are verbi to, to me, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of when you're so self-defined is you're, you're clear. And when you're clear, you know what belongs in your way and what doesn't belong in your way. And so interesting that Luann says that, um, that she mentioned all this example because my word this year is fun and purpose. So if anything isn't fun and on purpose with what it is that I desire, it's just not in my calendar. It's not in my day. <laughs> I don't entertain that thought. And so by default, when you are, when you are so, you're so clear in who you are, what matters to you, you will know what to say yes and what to say no to. I love that you said that because I want to introduce you guys to a concept in a book called The Best Yes. It's by a gal named Lisa Turkhurst. And this book is phenomenal because so often we feel like boundaries mean saying no. And then sometimes there's guilt around that. And, you know, we feel like we should. So then we say yes to things we shouldn't just because we feel bad or I can do this, right? It's not like it's necessarily not fun, but, you know, so the whole concept of the best yes is, is leaving space for I'm only saying yes to the things that I'm going to be able to give my best yes to, because let's be honest, if we say yes to all these scattered things, nobody's getting our best, right? Everybody's getting, you know, a half of us. And that's, that's actually not serving them or serving ourselves. And so the first time I remember, I asked my sister-in-law to help me with a project that I was working on. And she came back to me with this and I hadn't heard the concept before, but she said, you know what, right now, that is not my best yes. Or I can't give mm. my best yes, something along that. And at first I wanted to like, ah, right. But as I thought about that, I was like, wow, number one, I respect the fact that she had boundaries and she knew whether or not this was going to fit in. Um, and I didn't want her to say yes, if it wasn't going to be a good yes, right. If it wasn't going to be a best yes. And so, although I, yes, would have loved for her to say yes and help me with that project. Like I just had to respect that and realize that was her gift to me that she wanted to be able to give me a best yes. And that wasn't. So I think that coming back to your question, when we know, right, what our values are, what our purpose is, what our priorities are, then we know, like you guys are saying, what, if it's a, a best yes or not. So I think I might use that book for my next book club because I talk about it all the time. And I think it's a concept we need to keep mm. yeah, revisiting. Yeah, Thank because you. maybe um, if we say yes and we really mean maybe, or we really mean no, <laughs> but we're saying yes because we wanna please the other person or we're afraid we're gonna miss out on something. And one of my, one of my favorite coaches, asks this of his clients that you're a hell yes or you're a no so if you're just a yes or a maybe i'll get back to you or circle back with me he puts you on the no list he's like well then you're a no because he only wants to work with hell yes people and when I heard him talk about that one time, I was like, hmm, yeah, that resonates with me. So finding that, um, that value within myself from reading it, I said, hmm, that's what I want to be. I want to have that value. So I think that's really important. Great question, Lori. Um, anyone else want to answer Lori's question? about that personal value touch? Something came to me while you were talking that I have to share. And because you mentioned the fear of missing out FOMO, mm -hmm. and I have a tendency to have the FOMO. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think it was on our uh, Wonder Series last week that somebody brought this up. And instead to turn that around, into Jomo and the joy of missing out. Ooh. I was like, yes, <laughs> I, I love, love it. that. I love and it. So just another turnaround that we can think about and ponder about that. Lauren, did you have something to add to that, sweetheart? 
No, I, I wanted to ask a question. So I, I love that you're talking about how, I love Lori's question. It was great. Like how do the values help you set your boundary? I love your answers. You know, like certainly knowing those values helps you to know what to say yes to, to say no, what to say no to, all of that is great. But how do you find those values? So a lot of people don't think about their values. So I'm wondering if you guys have any um, tips or techniques or what you do to help your clients or yourself pull the values out and really hold them front and center. Mm, well, great question, course, Lauren. Of course, my answer is going to be the passion test. That's exactly what it does. It helps people to identify their top five passions and set a course to living those in your life. And they really are your core values. It's just a semantics of language, right? And by the way, again, it's not a test. You can't go online and take it by yourself. It is a process that I facilitate people through. And there's thousands of facilitators around the world using this tool to help them to narrow down to those top five passions. And then we add on the tools to uh, give you that. And like I said, whenever you're faced with a choice, a decision or an opportunity consistently choose in favor of your passions is the the core um, foundation of how it helps you set those boundaries and make the right choices for you in your life i'm sure there's other tools as well well i just ask the questions that i feel will serve the client at the moment so say for example if the person has no idea what their values are okay um what lights you up what makes you feel good um how do you define life how do you define yourself i mean there's just I, I allow myself to be guided according to what it is that I'm sensing. I'm very sensitive to energy. Probably that's why my name is Aura. But, <laughs> but I, I allow myself to be guided in the moment that I'm with the client and what I'm sensing from them. And that guides me as to what it is that I need to ask them. But finding, finding, finding the, the why also behind it. Why does this feel good for you? Why does this... You, you think this way and always investigating, lean into the curiosity. I'm, I'm a big believer that the more we lean into our curiosity, that's the start of the transformation. That doesn't have to be any, any big tool other than being curious. I love that. And, and yeah, being aware, right? Be curious, yeah. be aware, notice the patterns, right? What are the things that you tend to be drawn to? Make a list, what things energize you? What things deplete you? What things when you have to do, you're like, yes, I can do that. And I feel great. And, you know, and this, this does not feel like work, even though it may be, and you could do all day long. You could talk about all day long, you know, people come to you about, you know, that type of thing and then make a list of what are the things that, you know, yeah, there's just really drain me. So I think that personal awareness is key. The second thing that I do with my clients is I have them future project and I ask them the question five years from now write down the date. So right now it's 2022. So 20, February 8th of 2027, right? Think about how old you will be. Mm. Think about how old, you know, your significant other will be. Think about how old, especially with all of us around here, how old are your parents going to be at that in five years, right? How old are your kids or maybe even grandkids going to be in five years? Okay. So get that picture and then start asking, what do I want my life to look like? at that point. Mm. And that's going to show you what your values are, right? Because you're not going to go after things, you know, that you don't really care about, right? You're going to say, well, you know, it's probably going to be family focused and, you know, legacy focused and things that are in alignment with what really matters most to you. And I have a tool that I take my clients through. We go through seven areas of your life and we really look at and assess where are you right now, but then let's future, you know, like future forecast, where would you like this to be? So that now we can, you know, really start getting that vision in your head, right? Because otherwise we're just living by default, one foot in front of the, the other, one day after the next, not really paying attention. And of course, five years passes that fast, you guys, it's going to be 2027 before you know it. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's already been five years. Like we talked about that one day. Mm -hmm. Am I living this life that I said I wanted to, right? And so that's, yeah. So I like to use, like, like you said, Luann, a tool along with, you know, kind of really discovering where is my heart drawn and what really matters when it comes down to it? Beautiful. Beautiful. 
Um, anyone else in our audience have any questions or want any clarification from our coaches today? Nikki, Becky, Amy, Lauren? Um, oh, I'm raising my hand. Sorry, Hi, Becky. <laughs> Hi, Becky. I just figured out who that was. Yay. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Luann. I got here kind of through Luann who sent me an email about this. And actually, I thought it was kind of a just a, a speaker's panel. I didn't know it was like coaches coaching, you know, sharing stuff because I'm not a real coach. But this was a birthday present I was giving to myself because it's Hi. my birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Becky. And it's because of Luann who has encouraged me very much. And I stumbled in here and it's really been fun listening to you guys. Awesome. So here was my question though. Um, I always hear about journaling and I call myself like an off and on journaler. And I find I get really judgmental about my journaling with myself. Like you're, you know, you're not journaling enough or what's the right way to journal or I'm afraid I'll lose my journal or I'm afraid I won't, you know, I can't, I get this real journal aversion. <laughs> oh, and even like a, I have a hard time looking back at things I've written. I very, like very rarely have I done that. And as you guys were talking about it, I was thinking maybe that's something I should look into about myself because the, I don't know, does anyone else experience that? And then what are any, um, tips you use to kind of keep yourself journaling or make it the most meaningful for you? I think I can answer that. Um, for, we have a relationship with everything. <laughs> we have a relationship with everything. So there's a perception that is going on, it sounds like to me, which is affecting the way you're viewing um, journaling. And it's going to be important that you become aware. You, you said that you're afraid of losing um, the journal, right? And so when, if, if you're having those thoughts, of course, that's going to affect how you view your journal, what you're putting in your journal. For the sake of time, all I can say is that I encourage you to look at your journal as your best friend. That's the person that, or the thing, better yet to say, that you can dump all your ideas, that you can gain the clarity, that you don't have to be concerned with being judged. And if you start looking at your journal from that perspective, that is going to clear up a little bit, at least it's gonna be the start of clearing up that relationship that you have with your journal. Journaling, I, I, I make it creative. I make sure that my journal is right here. So I make sure I buy a journal that is attractive, that I love touching, that I just look forward to. That's part of you cultivating that relationship with your journal. A color that just makes you say, ah, choose a pen that you're like, oh my God, this feels so good. And another thing too about journaling, I actually have different color pens, if you don't mind me sharing this. Why? Because it's gonna be important that you differentiate when it's you dumping and when it's an inspired idea or something mm. that your inner being is telling you so that you can distinguish the two. I love that. I love having a fun journal. I think that's good. What I would say, Becky, is, is really ask yourself, why am I journaling? Because if you're doing it out of obligation, or out of some kind of a punishment or some something negative, guess what? It's not gonna be a good experience. You're gonna not wanna do it. You're gonna lose it, right? All the things that you were just concerned about. So stepping back and saying, am I doing this because this is what others expect? Am I doing this because I feel like I'm not enough if I don't? You know. And if those are the reasons, then don't do it, right? Or don't do it for a season until you really get clear on, here's why I wanna do it. And I love what Suzanne put in there, like just put in a positive win and a gratitude. Like that's going to force you to focus on positive. And then you're going to look forward to that because it's like, oh, I get to write down a win from today and a gratitude from today. Like that's a feel good thing. And then maybe like start creating that good relationship with journaling. And then you can eventually start using it for other processing things. But yeah, it's really going to come down to why are you journaling in the first place so that you don't associate negative things with it. Exactly. I, I'm just curious about one thing because I'm a writer. 
and I teach a lot of people writing. And how was your relationship with writing in general? Do you love to write? Did you like writing? Did you, is it something that caused you a lot of angst like it does for a lot of people? Uh, oh boy. Uh, my mother was a writer and editor. I was a proofreader. I am kind of a writer, but it's a scary thing for yeah. me. Because mm. words have power, because it's right? Funny, all the, yeah, all, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I, I, no, no, no. And, and just for lack of time, um, if I could just get this point out for you, it might help. Words have such power. And when you put them down, there, there's a permanence to it. And because you also come from a legacy where words matter, right? Books matter. Um, you take care of them. Your friends are important. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So what yeah. I would, what I would um, encourage you is to stop using words and start doodling in your journal and start allowing yourself just, and the dude, you don't have to be artistic. You're, one of the things I love doing best is I call it doodle and jot. And I give this to some of my clients sometimes where you literally will take a page of a journal and just do some abstract line to it. And then let your, think about it and breathe a little, let your emotions come through and use that jot to create a picture. It doesn't have to be abstract, but what you're doing is allowing the energy of your emotions to be put out in a way that is creative and telling. And you can come back to that picture and you can just start by labeling it, happy, sad, da, da, da. and then allowing yourself to, for the words to come in when it feels right, when it feels mm -hmm. appropriate. But it's a lot of times just using that creative energy because that's all, all a lot of that writing down is in, an act, in a way that you respond. Love it. Love you know, it. oh my God, I love it, you guys. This is. <laughs> A clarity I really, that has been, it's something that's been with me for so long, but I'm seeing it in a whole different way. Well, and that's why we're here. <laughs> that is absolutely why we're here for meaningful conversations. And we are at the top of the hour. And I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you to our coaches today, our guests today. And if you want more, don't forget, we are here for meaningful conversations and free coaching Fridays. Make sure you're subscribed to Living Healthy List. And if you have any further questions for our coaches, they can all be found on Living Healthy List. And have an awesome day. And thanks for being here. Appreciate each and every one of you. Take care. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you all so much. Thank you, Amy. It was awesome. Nice to see you all. Good to see you. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. I have to run right away, Suzanne, but great job. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Suzanne, great job. Thank you, Debbie, for recording it. Appreciate you. Yep, you guys too. That was great. All right, have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.